Let's do it, man. We gonna roll. I gotta share something you and I be talking about, the, the candy store. You say, what about the, the, the person that, talk yeah. about that. So when you say everybody, the, the, the guys that's in, because uh, I talk it's about like getting a Snicker. The, yeah, the candy store. Yeah, you know, yeah like talk about the candy that. store, what, what kind of candy do you like? You know, I like Snicker bars. That's what I'm saying. There's a Snickers bar, there's a Three Musketeers. Which one do you want? Uh, I want the I want the Three Musketeers. And, and I want the uh, Hershey's Kiss. Can I get that too? Reese Cup, you know. You got, it's, it's, <laughs> it's all kind of... It's all now, kind of flavor. See, the candy is all kind of flavor. And they say it's free too, right? Yeah, they say it's free. But, but it's all kind of flavor. Okay. Uh, but they don't tell you it's going to destroy you. Daryl Strawberry, the man, the myth, and the legend. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, what's happening, bro? It's, it's, it's good to have you here, man. It's good to see you again, man. Good to be here. Dude, you are a ghost, man. I talk to you from time to time. I call you, what's up, B? Where you at, man? Uh, I'm in China. Yeah, I'm in Egypt. <laughs> you be all over the place. I'm always with what my suitcase. What you doing suitcase. nowadays, man? I'm always with my suitcase. What you, what you got? A little travel bag? A little travel bag. At a yeah. moment's notice, you got to go. <laughs> so what you, what's, what's been happening lately, man? Oh, busy, man. Just trying to help people. Okay. Trying to encourage people, help people. That's uh, good. Empower people with um, just principles. Yeah. You know, yeah. something I had to learn. I, okay. For for a very long time, I struggled. You know, with that worldly perspective of mm -hmm. you know being a successful baseball player and achieving great things, but. Um, you know, deep down in the ins inside, I was like truly empty. Wow. But I watched you though, Daryl, man, since I've known you. I think the first time I heard you speak was um, in Jacksonville at a men's conference. And, uh, you know, I knew Daryl Strawberry. I watched the little baseball I watched. You know, <laughs> just <laughs> watched. a little bit, right? Dude, y'all play a million games. I that's mean, that's the fun part about it. So, so I mean, for me, being a, being a, being a, a former NFL football player, I, I like the acting. You guys don't really get down to the nitty gritty to playoffs. Then y'all get serious, and then y'all turn the hat around backwards and all that stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When, it, when it's just the season, be like, "Hey man, who we play in the morning? Okay, we play. All right, it's just regular." Well, because you don't play a three game series, you know, three That's game, ridiculous. four game series against the same team. You're just gonna be facing a different pitcher every night. Man, I couldn't imagine doing that in the football, man. Yeah, it's you long. Think? I mean, because you go through that spring training process, mm -hmm. which is boring. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, play, so players always talk about coming to spring training and. Um, Getting in shape. I used to go to spring training in shape. Oh, so I had okay. to stretch it out and kind of just go through the first part of spring training and the last part. See, I get I got excited when it was the end of spring training because uh -huh. we about to roll into the season. Oh, but now, why did you come in, in shape? I mean, that's just who you are. I mean, you just you like, dude. That's who. Bro, I am. Oh, I'm an athlete. Okay, you but know? the other guys are athletes. They just but they, a lot of times athletes don't, they don't look prepare themselves. You know, they don't prepare themselves for the long haul. Uh, they wait to get to spring training to get in shape and start running and training. And then, you know, you find yourself having nagging injuries. Yeah, okay. And, and then that slows you down. I always wanted to bounce into spring training in shape so I wouldn't have injuries. Yeah. And I stayed away from injuries for a very long time because I came in top wow. shape. See, now I'm, I'm, so you didn't have to do that playing football. You got to run it off and sweat and <laughs> put the pads on and the helmet. Let, let, let me tell you something, dude. You're crazy, man, because, <laughs> because I know – uh, training camp for us was was a lot more physical. So to right. hear you say that you came in in shape is, is is new to me. But but going back to the um, the first time I heard you speak. So how long have you just decided to go out and, and then be speaking and stuff? Well, I think that was kind of the beginning of God's calling on my life to okay. to, to speak like that. And, and Pastor Tim invited me down to come there. It was a mm -hmm. men's conference and, mm -hmm. and and just to share you know just to share my story. Of, God was just really working in my life and really, really changing me from who I was as an athlete. And, mm -hmm. and um, I had an opportunity just to share, share my heart. And, and it, was, it was good. It was good to really get on a different platform because this is a greater platform than just playing ball. Yeah. Because yeah. playing ball is one thing I do know about that, that's going to pass. Okay. And who are you after that? And a lot of times we don't really know who we are after we take off the mm -hmm. uniform and and it wasn't until I got to that place and really took off the uniform and really walked away from a lot of things. And then I started to realize that God had a, had a call in my life. Mm -hmm. He had already always been there and, you know, pulling for me to come that way. Talk about having to accept that responsibility that I went through all of, I went through and now I'm supposed to go share that. Well, for a very long time, I really didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of us are, feel like we're not qualified to be able to stand in the pulpit. None of us are really qualified. Mm -hmm. well, God's the one qualifies yeah. us to be able to do it. And it takes it, it takes discipline, just like it took playing baseball. It takes that uh, you have to be in a place where uh, you are 
studying, mm -hmm. you know, God's word for yourself to, to become a different person. So uh, you felt you felt like either you didn't have anything to say or you were just inadequate. Like, like, you know, what do I have to say? Are you, if you say, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, we got we all got a lot to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a matter of are we putting in in principles, yeah. biblical principles. So they're calling and say, Daryl, can you come talk to our men's group? Can you talk, come talk to our high school or our kids? And you just flat turn them down or you say, hey, I got some other stuff to do? Well, I, um, I just wouldn't do it at the time. You know, okay. I, was, I, I didn't do it until I really realized that I, I was equipped to do it um, from a biblical stand, standpoint. Because okay. okay. I don't want to get up there and I don't want to share about things and I don't know the principles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Because it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, you cannot help anyone uh, without understanding the bi biblical principles mm -hmm. and I think a lot of times guys want to get up and share and I love God and and, and say that but they really don't live for God right, as, right. As, yeah you know, so you didn't want to be faking no so, okay. I, I didn't want to be I didn't want to be a hypocrite okay and I, I the reason why I say that because I heard um Pastor Randall Cuddyham tell me that yeah you know, he, he he was talking to me and he said he just had to he don't want to be a hypocrite no more and you say Randall Cuddyham is quarterback yes. Randall, yeah I played against, I played against uh Pastor Randall um, that's that's pretty interesting, man. So you took the same approach then to you speaking is what I just heard you say. And 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 I, like I said, I've known you for a little bit, but to your to your baseball and you had like like I'm going to be prepared if I'm going to do this. You have to. Yeah, you have to because you you'll lead people the wrong way. Okay. Um, you make them believe uh, that you're following God, but you're really not. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times we've done that yeah. so many of us have you know we've said God on television we praise mm -hmm. him and everything and then at the end we we're not following him. yeah we're, yeah. we're, we're living a different way you know <laughs> and, and and people are watching your life I yeah. mean, you, you, because because going back the, on you 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 were out in front and center in baseball everybody knew who Daryl Strawberry was it was no secret and now you are making this transition and you're saying everybody know who Daryl Strawberry is. So, so, so there were some people that I believe were hoping that you succeed, and some people were like, man, he fake it. You know, well, yeah, Did, I mean, that had to play a part in your mind too. Well, though. a lot of people don't don't really care. Yeah. You know, they they pretend like they really do. Mm -hmm. But when you start living this way, um, living for God, and they start seeing it, mm -hmm. and then they really envy that because okay. they really want that, yeah. but they won't do the work. See, and that's what most people don't understand. It, it, it's a lot of work that you have to do. You yeah. don't have to change. Oh a yeah. Lot. Oh you, yeah. You gonna have to change a lot of things oh, oh, around no doubt. you. Yeah. yeah. You have <laughs> no to change doubt. people and places and mm -hmm. things, and, and a lot of times people don't want to give up that. Okay. And you're gonna have to give all that up uh, to sacrifice. You're gonna have to sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, to be able to become the man that God wants you to be. Okay. And a lot of times people uh, are in fear of that. They don't want to lose the the worldly things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and. Sometimes they don't realize how cool it is to lose all that stuff that they thought made who made them who they were. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and find real life. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. real life on this side. Yeah, you know that's not real. That's just you know what we used to do. Yeah, you exactly. Know, because when you think about it, Fred, what happens when you're done? The team's no longer mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you played for us. What? Yeah. Are they patching on the shoulder when they, they, when and, they come and, back? Hey, hey, there, and that, <laughs> that check is still coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, that check ain't yeah, coming, no yeah, yeah. boy. Like if the check keep coming, you still got me. So yeah, me, so that yeah you're part. Of, you're part of what they're doing. If, yeah. if, if that check comes, once that check is over with, you know, then like, it's over. Yeah, we see you when you come in for certain events and stuff, yeah. and we'll wave at you and say say good things and thanks for being here. But you know, outside of that, that's just that's just what it is. So in the last twenty years, what was your biggest influence? Because um, how do you sixty uh, five? Sorry, do I look 65? <laughs> you look good for 65. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 55, man. 55. Don't be putting no 10 years on me yet. You look, you look pretty good, man. What did you say? You said 55. 55. 55, man. The time just flies. You're like a character, man. You really want to throw it out there and put me on 65, huh, Fred? <laughs> well, think about it now. If you were 65, then you'd be like, dude, I really look good. Yeah. I mean, you look good for 55. Right, but you, look, you look outstanding for 65. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but oh, I mean, who was the, if looking back, man, over your life, who was probably the biggest influence um, that you could mention or, or say in your life? Like My mom. My mom okay. was the biggest influence on my life. Okay. Uh, because I watched her and I watched her raise five kids mm -hmm. by herself. Wow. And I watched her live for God. Okay. Didn't understand it. 
maybe because I didn't want to understand it because yeah. I was in the middle of my life and she was living a different way. Okay. And it was just such a great piece over her life and how she lived and how she treated other people and how she helped so many other people. Yeah. She didn't try to force her spirituality or her Christianity on you guys. She just, I mean. No, she <laughs> didn't. And, and what I really love about her is she, is she never got caught up in the fact that I was a major league baseball player. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. and that, that's really, that really impressed me more than anything. She wasn't running around with a uniform on, jersey on, that I'm her son and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. She was just a very humble person. And, and I watched her live and I watched her raise five, five kids by yeah. herself. And she was, that takes a lot uh, to raise five kids by yourself. And, really? You know, when you see that, you understand that there was something great about her. And, mm -hmm. and her influence and her impact on my life was, was tremendous. Wow. I, I think that's probably why I'm sitting here today and who I am today, because of uh, humility. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's who my mom was. She walked in humility. And, and to be able to do that and raise five kids you know, back at that time was mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, now, she, and, is she still with us? No, she's not. Okay. She's been gone for about 20 years. Were you able to thank her for that? I mean, were you able to say, hey, mom, you know, I mean, talk about that? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I was I was always grateful for her. She, she knew I was because mm -hmm. when I became a pro athlete, you know, I took care of my mom. That was my number one goal. Okay. I didn't care what I, what I do in life, how, how successful mm -hmm. I got in life. The most important thing was, was taking care of my mother. Okay. And because I saw her raise five kids and I saw the struggle. Um, that was there mm -hmm. and I saw the rejection of my father and and the brokenness of our, our household and there was yeah little mom keeping it together wow and that's you know that's that's amazing and yeah. I think a lot of a lot of people don't receive that in their life and know the importance of that because if you don't have a male figure around in your life and then you have a strong mother who's mm -hmm. got a backbone to carry the family and put it on her back which she did yeah, uh, yeah. that's why yeah. we became who we are uh, can you, our, can you think of one thing that she told you um, that looking back, you go, Mom, thank you for that, because cause, cause it, it's just as you said. I mean, is there one thing that you think about with her? Like this? Yes, it is. And one thing she's always, she always talked to all of us is always respect others, no matter what. Okay. Yeah. Because, no I mean, you're a very humble dude. Dear. I mean, when I, like I said, I met you several years ago, and, and there's no pretense. You know, no. I mean, you are who you are. Is that because of that, though? That's because of my mom. Okay. Yeah, because she was like that. And regardless of what people did or say, you know, she she would just turn the cheek the other way. Yeah. And she taught us that. There's it's no reason to get in the midst of things with mm -hmm. others um, because they don't, you know, they don't have control over your life. Okay. You know, so yeah. why fuss about it? Yeah. And, you know, it was hard for me at times, you know, because I really wanted to get in a few people's face, and I did <laughs> from time to time. And, yeah, yeah. And then I had <laughs> to pull myself one. back. I had to pull myself back. And Your mom. My mom was like, boy, what are you doing? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. And she always, she always, she always taught yeah. us that. But know? that's the competitive nature, too, now. Yeah, Sometimes, yeah, yeah. You that to, is, yeah. you know, that is. But she taught us those, those values about yeah. um, always respecting others. Yeah. And, and we we kept that with us, okay. me and my brothers and sisters. So dad wasn't around, and so you get you get. Cause did you go to college? Did you play basketball? No, I came straight out of high school. Dude, I went to Sidewalk University. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned everything. <laughs> that, we don't recommend that. No, we, we, don't, don't, we don't recommend that. Recommend but that. I learned everything from the sidewalk. What do we talk, talk, talk about? I'm that. talking about on the streets that you used to play on. You know, this yeah. concrete football on the street. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because you didn't have money to go to all these Dude. other places to to play football. I've you know? never heard that, man. Yeah. Sidewalk University. Yeah, because that's the, that's the university. I was. Okay. I learned everything from yeah the concrete sidewalk football, no. playing basketball yeah. on the concrete. You know, learned all that stuff. Well, I've heard people say you learned it from hard knocks, and hard. so that's the same thing as that concrete. It's the yeah, same yeah. thing. You know, it's yeah. the same thing. You know, and si I always call it Sidewalk University because yeah. it's the best university you can learn from and. Sidewalk University is your neighborhood where you grow up. Yeah, at. yeah. <laughs> now, if you don't have sidewalk, you're in church. But you do, might do, have you ever, do you ever regret, man, not going to college? I mean, I've got three boys, and, and, I, and, and, and I actually went back to college and graduated after I retired from the NFL um, because I wanted to be able to tell my kids I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. Do you ever regret not going to college? No. Do you ever think about it? That? No, I don't regret <laughs> because it, the thing is, I think we all have a journey. Okay. And everybody's journey is going to be different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and of course, I never went to college 
but here it is, all my kids are going to college. Yeah. Now, is so, that because you encourage them to go, or they, they just... Yeah, I, I mean, I encourage Because I would be like, <clears throat> damn, you didn't go to college, and look at but, you, you know what I'm saying? I, we, I mean... But they don't understand. I come from a different place. I was, I was, I was multi-talented. Okay. And I was uh, able to get drafted out of high school. Mm -hmm. I, I had a scholarship to go to college, uh, but I wanted to play baseball, mm -hmm. and I made my mind up, and... I went on the side to play baseball, yeah. so there was no college. And then, and like I said, that's why I learned from Sidewalk University. Now, it's the now best university you? you can learn from. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, 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 I remember my signing bonus, man. My signing bonus when I, my first year in the NFL was eight thousand dollars, right? Come on. My, my dad wasn't around, and and the, and the and the lady at the bank was like, uh, you know, basically how I wanted it done and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, give me four here, give me yeah, four later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm like, I, I want mine now. Yeah, give it to me right yeah, yeah. now. I'm my I mean, right. I signed for eight thousand, and I was excited about it. So, so I mean, what was your signing bonus, man? And then, I mean, you, but you in high school? Yeah, it was so high school. My signing you? bonus was two hundred thousand, coming out of high school, nineteen eighty. Oh my! So, so basically, you think you you basically died in I'm thinking I'm red. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm coming. Like from, I don't have to, I don't have to ever work again. <laughs> I'm coming from the hood, you know. Two hundred like, grand. You yeah. thinking I have won the lottery? I just thought that at that time, you know, this can't be real. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it it was real, and it was. It, I was grateful. Mm -hmm. you know, I was grateful for the fact because I was going to take care of my mother. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's what it really was all about. And I didn't have these big ideas or big plans for myself. Okay. Uh, I just know. I just knew inside I wanted to play Major League Baseball, and, and this was my opportunity to get yeah. there to play Major League Baseball. But now all of that happens. You, you get drafted. You, you sign the bonus. When did it turn, man? Like, you know, I, I've talked and I've heard people say that, that you see women of the night, so to speak, the women in the street, people who are homeless, uh, people who've done crazy stuff. It's like I didn't start out to say, hey, I want to be a, a, a drug dealer. Or I didn't want to be homeless. Mm -hmm. When did it turn? Like, like, you know, the people started coming around because, because you, you talk about that. Like, well, it's just, it's just the whole lifestyle. Okay. You know, the whole lifestyle of being a professional athlete. Uh, everything is at your hands, mm -hmm. and nobody ever tells you no. Now, now you got to share something you and I be talking about the, the candy store. You say, what about the, the person? That, talk yeah. about that. So when you say everybody, the, the, the guys that saying. Because uh, I talked about like going to the, yeah, the candy store, yeah, you know, yeah, like going to the candy that. store. What, what kind of candy do you like? You know, there's, I like Snicker bars. That's what I'm saying. There's a Snickers bar. There's a Three Musketeers. Which one you want? Uh, I want the I want the Three Musketeers, and, and I want the uh, Hershey's Kiss. Can I get that? Too? Reese's Cup. You know, you it's, 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 it's all kind. <laughs> It's all now, kind of flavor. See, the candy is all kind of flavor. And they say it's free too, right? Yeah, they say it's free, but but it's all kind of flavor. Okay. Uh, but they don't tell you it's going to destroy you. Ooh, that's good. That's they, just like the candy sugar. You eat a lot of that, it's going to destroy boy. you. Boy. Come Boy, on, baby. That's good and, right there and, now. And they don't say, tell you that part. They like, don't tell you that part. It's going to cause your teeth to get right. They, they, they don't tell you that part. All you know is it's free and I can yeah, get it. Yeah, and when you, Boy, walk in, when you walk into those kind of candy stores and that lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, okay, and um, there it is. You know, what flavor you want? There's women yeah. women all there for yeah, you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because trans, we're talking about the women. I mean, because some people be talking about, oh, they had all the candy? <laughs> like, no, we're not talking about real candy. Yeah. We're talking about all the, the candy, the real women and all that stuff. Yeah, but, pick what you like. And, yeah. But you don't realize, you know, that that's going to destroy you. Yeah. You have yeah. no idea. Because a lot of times we're, we're so young, you think, well, I'm just having fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But they don't, you don't realize that that type of fun uh, creates habits. Okay. And when you create, when you create those kind of habits, uh, then the habits start opening the, open the door for all kind of things. Yeah. And you walk through, you be introduced to all kind of things. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not like, um, it's not like just girls. You introduce, you get introduced to alcohol. You get mm -hmm. introduced to the drugs. You know, the whole scenery is, is wow. real and it's very powerful uh, when you in it. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. then you think you have really control of it. No, and also you think, oh man, I truly, truly have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> you say, I truly have a right. <laughs> like, but, look at me but, now. But, but that's what it here. is. That's yeah. what it is inside that's, of yourself. You know? yeah. And people would say, well, you know, why would you waste that? Why would you waste your time? No, it wasn't a waste. No. I still, I performed. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm having fun. I've arrived and I'm still performing. Yeah. But so nobody know what they would do in that. Yeah. They, people can always look at you and project, well, I wouldn't do it. You don't know what you would yes. do. Because it's in the it's in the moment. You're not looking at this from a so a thirty thousand foot view. You're saying I'm in this. I've arrived. 
And then tell me this, was there ever a point, like you said, I deserve this? Because, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I am that person. Well, so, I, I <clears> never <throat> thought about thought about it that way okay. of deserving. I deserve to um, be a baseball player. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, okay. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, all the other stuff that, that came along with it, I, I just thought it was part of the package. Yeah. Can you put a place in time, like, you realize, like, wait a minute, this is not just fun. It's like, I got to have this to have fun. Well, eventually it's going to take <laughs> over. I used to think I was Superman, you know, because... <laughs> See, it wasn't, see, Fred, the thing is, <laughs> I never had a problem playing baseball. Oh, oh. I had a problem living. There's a big difference. Okay. You know, than playing sports or entertaining or whatever yeah. you are, a CEO. Yeah. You could do your job. Yeah. But can you live? So when but you can you live, but, you know, and the thing, I don't mean to cut you off. No, you good. What I'm saying, the thing about it is, is living as a man. I see, I was never a man. I was just a baseball oh, player, you know, and, okay. and, and I think a lot of times, Men think they are men because they uh, very successful and they're mm -hmm. bringing home, you know, the money. Man, that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, complete yeah. knuckleheads. That, you know, right, we have man. it all backwards. Oh, yeah. well, I'm taking care of you. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. That's your job to take care of your family and be responsible. Yeah. But I wasn't a man, so I was having fun. Wow. So that's when when fun fun turns into being chaotic. But man, that's interesting. You said you didn't have a problem being Daryl the baseball player. You right. had problems being Daryl the man. Right. Because I was never taught what a man's supposed to be. Wow. And and, and, and we believe we believe because we're successful and mm -hmm. we're achieving, that makes me a man. No, yeah. that makes you a CEO. Yeah. That makes you the president oh, of this company. Right there, that's strong. That makes you a baseball player, mm -hmm. that makes you an entertainer, but mm -hmm. it does not make you a man. Wow, dude. That's crazy you put it that way. You talk about you know how to be a baseball player but then how to be a man. Probably in that in that circle there was a lot of abuse. I mean, you know, with the candy store, the women like, hey, you didn't know how to present yourself before the men. So there's a lot of that happening now. I mean, what is it called? The, like the hashtag Me Too? I mean, the, the, the Harvey Weinstein. I mean, how, what, what's your take on all of that, Sam? Well, this has been, I mean, this has been going on forever. Yeah, they're going back. I mean, they're going way back. They're going way back. Yeah, you know, they're going way back. They're going back past our time, before our time, um, the history of it. Uh, and they never learned. You yeah. know, they, there was never a learning process for them how to be a real man mm -hmm. how see it was so you think that's at the core of it really yeah because it's people <laughs> in power you know uh -huh. people in power um, they control mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what what it is when you have this uh, title mm -hmm. so it means I can do whatever I want yeah because that's your own title you know the entitlement of who you are and, and mm -hmm. well I'm a CEO why well, I'm a mm -hmm. Uh, athlete, where I can act like this. Yeah. No, you can't yeah. act like that. See, that, that acting out like that is is, is from being a boy. Mm -hmm. It's about, about never growing up. That's good. And, and we put ourselves in Because boys do stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. And we, we, had, we didn't learn. And you'll find out most, most of these people uh, have, have had some deeply broken uh, situations in their life yeah. to make them feel like that, that, that never w was taught. You know, now this is what a man look, uh, lives like. Yeah. This is how the character of a man is. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have those principles, uh, your life is going to act out. Yeah. And so you think if we go back, and I don't even know if they mention it, uh, if we go back and look at their their lives in terms of their relationship with their dad, you, you're saying it's probably going to be some brokenness? Oh, it's going to be some brokenness. Okay. There, you know, okay. because. because it, cause when you come from, um, f come from dysfunction, yeah. you become dysfunction. Wow, boy. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm going to be quoting that hashtag. <laughs> you know what? You said, you said uh, too, man, I was talking with a buddy of mine, and it's, and it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. Like, like you said, you, you, you just said they're going way back. Man, he and I were talking on the phone with some of the people. They're going back 20, 30 years, 40 years. He said, man, I, I, I got to go back in my life, man, and see if I, it, it follow, he said, see if I put a roof on that, that they didn't sign for, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they said, I, I know I knocked down a few walls, but right. but I usually got a consent form, yeah. if you will. <laughs> I got a consent form. Yeah, I got a consent form because they're saying, I didn't, I didn't, that was unwanted, uh, uh, you know, approach. You touch me in the wrong way, doing things inappropriate. Yeah. But but a lot of it is, is got to do with brokenness. Brokenness, yeah. You know, yeah. And I, I just, but I'm glad that, you know, I had my mom and yeah. I never really went into those kind of, places like that uh, okay. or treating women. I was bad, you know, in, in my own way of, yeah. of cheating and stuff like that, yeah. But, but uh, more respect. More, more, more respectful towards okay. women, you know, that I met and stuff and, you know, never really done anything 
crazy yeah. like that. And but, I mean, it happens. You yeah, know, it, yeah. It, it's real. So, so, it, so now knowing what you know, you're, you, you, you got things together. You and Tracy, man, you guys are awesome. You, and we'll, we'll talk about right. that in, in a second. But if you can go back 20 years, maybe, maybe 30 years, because you, you're 55. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you can go back and talk to Daryl Strawberry. The, he's getting ready to get drafted, mm -hmm. and you could sit him down and talk to him now, knowing what you know now. What would you tell him? I, I, I would tell him I would wish you to listen to your mother. You know, Go, explain that man. because of the fact of my mother was a person that never hurt people, mm -hmm. and you know me, I ended up hurting my first wife and my second wife. And but kids. you're talking to him now, so you yeah. got to talk to him. Yeah, so what do you and, and I was, yeah, I was. With him, you know what I'm saying. He was, you know, he was a person that just wanted to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. And and if but I was, talk to him. But if I was talking, yeah, you If I was talking, if I was talking to him, there's the no talking right to now him. Get ready to, okay. But there's no talking to him because he couldn't listen because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. Well, okay. And and, I, and that's because of the brokenness that was inside because you know with the physical abuse from my father mm -hmm. uh, left me scarred. Okay. So I wouldn't be able to have a conversation with him because he didn't want to hear it because. After the father left the house, mm -hmm. there was no more listening to anybody. Whoa. He had already made his mind up that he wasn't going to okay. listen to anybody. And the only person that I could ever hear when I was doing all those things back then was my mother. Okay. And okay. her thing yeah. was, I didn't raise you like that. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. You so that's that? why you say you would tell, that, that, tell Daryl now, listen to your mother. Listen to your mother. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I would okay. tell a young good, me dude. and... Uh, young guys, I would tell them, listen, listen to your mom, mm -hmm. you know, because she's never going to tell you wrong. Okay. You know, okay. That's, that's the one thing that I learned, because if you grew up in the home and it was just you and your mom, you never heard a male voice. All you heard is a female voice. Yeah. Yeah. So other, all the other, all the other voices that I was hearing out there mm -hmm. didn't match up to what she was saying. It matched up to wow. what I wanted to do. Wow. If Daryl at 20 wasn't listening, when, when did Daryl finally surrender? When did Daryl Strawberry finally surrender and say, I'm going the wrong way. Well, it wasn't until after the career was over. I was done. Yeah, because I was living a life. I, listen, I was living a whole. My life was. I, it was all a lie. Okay. Yeah, it, it wasn't real. The, the the part when you said the man part, because your baseball part wasn't. That was that was. Awesome. That was real. Yeah. yeah. But, but the part when you say you didn't know how to live like a man. Yeah, that was the man a lie. part was a lie. Wow. Yeah, the man part was a lie because uh, that lifestyle being, you know, a baseball player, famous mm -hmm. and. You know, you think you can have everything, do everything, do what you want, and yeah. you don't know how detrimental that is to to your soul. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and it was to my soul. Um, and it wasn't until I um, got out of baseball after my mom passing. Okay. Um, after. Because that had to impact you. I mean, yeah, that yeah. impacted me uh, tremendously. Were you there? Uh, were yeah, you I was there okay. for my mom's passing. We were all there. And wow. How was I, that? How I mean. It's at the end, man. So yeah, it was I, at, yeah, yeah, it was at the end of my career. How'd too, you feel when there. that was over? I was, I was, I was very sad. Because um, you still hadn't surrendered right to that no, point. No, I was very sad because I, watching her die in front of my own eyes, I was very sad. It was, it was the hardest time of my life because she was the only one that would always encourage me. And you felt like you had disappointed her? I felt like, I, yeah, I felt like I, I felt like I disappointed her because I didn't listen. Wow. And, you know, when you don't listen, it, it, it kind of reminds you what's important. Was she and able to tell you anything though at, the, at that moment to say? I, mom, there wasn't. Mom didn't push the issue, and yeah. she just said God's gonna get it out of you. On, right there on, in the hospital. On, well, on her deathbed, she was telling me. She said that. Oh yeah, she told me. She said God's gonna get it out of you. She said, God spoke to me. She said I turned all you guys over to God, and she said God is going to get it out of you. She told me. She said you're gonna go through it, but she really? said yeah. She said but God said He's gonna get it out of you. Wow. That's, so like, you, I, that's why I tell boys, listen to your mama. Mama don't lie. Yeah. You know, and, and people need to understand that. Not taking anything away from, from dad. a dad. Well, I mm -hmm. didn't have a dad. Yeah. So I don't know what that feels like. Some people have had their dad in their life and encouraged them to go mm -hmm. down a different road. But I didn't have that. And I, all I had was a mama. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all I can deal with. Yeah. And, and for her to tell me is, he's going, God's going to get it because she was a faithful woman. Mm -hmm. And she says, I prayed for all of you, all of you guys. Mm -hmm. And she said. But um, she looked at you specifically and said. Oh, yeah, one night. One night I was hanging out with her at her house. And okay. she was laying in bed. And she said, pray for me. And she I, told you to pray for her? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. You, you, I skipped. Did I miss something? You wasn't praying. You hadn't. 
She told you to pray for her. She told me to pray, yeah. Yeah. She What'd you me, do? She told me, <laughs> like, no, uh, she told me to pray. Jesus, well, did you say? <laughs> like, no. I mean, because I because she had saw me get she had, she had saw me get saved in ninety one. Okay. Radically saved at a Morris Road conference, and she knew I had been saved. But you were still playing baseball. I was still playing baseball. Yeah, and she knew I got saved. That's when I had got saved, and okay. she knew I got saved. But I still went back out. Yeah, that was and yeah. she was just laying in bed, and she was like, "Just pray for me," and I was I was I was like living like a heathen. Yeah. But I knew how to pray. Wow, Darren. So what'd you do, man? I prayed for her. And she said, mm. she said, she said, boy, you can pray. Mm -hmm. She said, God just spoke to me. She said, God said, he, he's going to get it out of you. She said, you're going to go through it. God, that's man. That's before the fire. I mean, I was still, that's before the fire really kicked in. Okay. She said, you're going to go through it, but he said, he's going to get it out of you. That's amazing, man. That's, that's amazing. why I tell you, you that's why. I, how long after that before you totally, I mean, because you, you heard her voice and she passed away like how long before? 90, yeah, that was. Right after she told you that, was it a couple of months? Around 95, you, it was, yeah, 95. Okay. The year of 95, I believe it was. Um, and um, we were just hanging out and she, she never preached to me. She mm -hmm. never, she was just a to godly woman, yeah. you know, and just cool, yeah. you know, and just loved her for that. She never said, you need to stop. She just said, well, she would say, well, you just need to leave those girls alone and focus on your career. But it was going in one ear? Out the other. Yeah. She said, and she said, well, you know you need to stop drinking. I was like, oh. She said, God said he's going to get out of you. I said, Mom, don't be telling me that. I need a drink, you know. Wow, Daryl. And she was like, God said he's going to get it out of you. Yeah. And she said, he's going to get it out of you. That's amazing. So you finally, Mom passes away. Yeah. How Ten long? Years after that. <clears throat> okay. Takes years, you know, until 2000. Three, four. But did you keep hearing her voice though from time to time? Like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, or you know, my, you know, kind of. Because you went through a lot of stuff after you. But I she mean, said I was gonna go through it. She and she, you went. You've been through it. I went through it. She because she said you are gonna go through it. Wow. Um, Do you think you did you think you contributed to that though? I mean, had you? Well, well yeah, because because I would surrender. Yeah, if you just surrender, okay, okay. Because okay. I didn't surrender. You okay. know, most of us don't surrender. Okay. You know, most yeah. of us, most of us chasing. And we we're chasing yeah. the win. Yeah, that's right. Because that's right. we don't know what we chase. We take we think we're chasing to be successful yeah. and this and that, but uh, we're chasing after the win. And, and but I just knew from my mom that was so true that I was going to go through it. Because okay. when I was in it, she said I was going to be in it. She said you're going to really go through it. It's like you've been preserved. I know you and I've talked. We talked about your the kidney. Mm -hmm. um, you tell me about that. You again. Right, cancer twice and lost my left kidney in my second surgery. Uh, went through drug addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, been locked up in the Florida State Prison. Mm -hmm. T one seven one six nine. Going through it. Going through it. Going mom, through it just like mom it. said it was. And and then God comes along in in my life and you know, saves my life. Mm -hmm. You know, He saves my life. See, and that's the thing about it. When I think about my mom, what did God use? He used people. Yeah. Okay. To help people. Okay. And that's why He saved people. Yeah. And if we can ever understand that and get to that, because my mom was an example, because mm -hmm. we looked at her as a Christian and we knew she was saved. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt, no, no doubt. doubt. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, <coughs> and then God brings my wife Tracy into my life mm -hmm. after all I've been through, after divorce and all brokenness, left with nothing. Yeah, I'm sitting there with a with an empty life, using drugs, shooting dope. Wow. Three million dollars in debt. Guess who comes in my life, Tracy? Whoa. At the bottom with nothing. God used her. Uh -huh. Now, of course, you wouldn't love at first sight. You wouldn't like, oh, yeah, God, this is her and all that stuff. You didn't. No, but I said, yeah. if, you know, I was crying out to God. Well, if there's a sign for me to stay alive, why don't you show me the sign? And that's how I, boom, I ended. Because you at the bottom. You think I'm done. I was at I'm the gone. bottom. I'm, yeah, done. I'm done. Yeah, mm -hmm. there it is, the sign. You know, I said, shows me, show me the sign. Mm -hmm. Then he sent it into my life. It was Tracy. I knew it was her, but I was still using. I took her through the same thing that I took all that the other all over, yeah, yeah, all over again. Well, why didn't she leave? I mean, she could have just said, I'm "Well, she did leave." <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> she's just, no, she's she's like, like, I'm out of here. You're, you're but like, she's still really here. And she's, uh, Tracy is awesome. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to my girl, man. So, how long did she stay on? Like, I'm, like, I can't deal with this. Well, she went on and got her life together after okay. we finished, finally broke up. Yeah, and we were living right, and she was like, "I'm not doing this no more." And 
Now she mentioned something there, like like uh, she tell me she said something about um, uh, coming to get you at certain places, something, and and just she wouldn't quit on you. She, oh, she, she wouldn't quit. quit on God. She either. wouldn't quit on God. I mean, yeah. just like I said, just like God uses people. You yeah. know, when you go back and the history of the Bible and the people in the Bible, they all had issues. Yeah. But God used them mightily, even in spite of those issues. With those issues, yeah, you know, that's and, good. and that's what He does, you know, and. And as people, we got to understand that. That's why we got to always have concern mm -hmm. uh, for others' well-being, regardless of what their condition is. That's right. That's good. Well, man, I want to ask you this. This has been great. I mean, this is this is better. I mean, you you the bomb, dude. <laughs> no, you are, Fred. <laughs> you man, dude. But but tell me this, man. Looking back, like, tell me some. Tell me one thing that you you're thankful for. I mean. Um, and, it, and and just looking back over your life, because you've had a, I mean, great career. Um, obviously, God has preserved you. Right. Um, looking back, what do you what do you what are you thankful for? Well, I'm, I mean, I, I know you mentioned your mom, but but what do you? Well, I'm truly I'm truly <laughs> th I'm truly thankful for my wife. Okay. More than anything, because uh, God used her to help me find life mm -hmm. and, and to become a man. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's what it really is really is all about at the end of the day yeah you know have yeah. I reached the purpose of why I was created mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times we can't find it ourselves yeah and that's true it got like I said God always use uses people to help people get there and we all we all must remember that that we all the vessel to be used to help somebody else that's good that's good and did you, did she in last did, did she gain stock with you so to speak because she because she stuck with you or, or stayed with God and then you saw that in her life and it wasn't just all about Daryl because everybody else was about Daryl yeah, yeah everybody else was about me and, yeah. and, and she stayed with God yeah and and she loved me when I couldn't love myself that's good and she loved me when I was even at the lowest points of having nothing mm -hmm. but she loved me right in the midst of that and most everybody else was gone uh, mm -hmm. people were pointing fingers at me and, wow. and laughing and, and she was saying that God's going to change your life mm -hmm. if you just believe. Man, and, that's and, amazing. And it was a process, you know, it was a process. It wasn't an overnight miracle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, that's and, right. And I think a lot of times people, people like, need to know that. Yeah, because yeah. they think it's an overnight miracle, you know. And she says, you just, you need to be faithful and learn to walk with God. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to turn away from everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I did because it was a great challenge to me because that's all I ever knew. That's good. And, and I started, I started, I started listening and I started walking. And my whole life, my whole life changed. Now you've got the uh, you've got the Daryl Strawberry Center, right? Yes. Okay. Um, how many you've got two and two? Because I two. spoke at one of those. One yes. of those. Which are, you've got two now. Yes. Uh, what's your plans going forward? Uh, well, the plans the plans going forward for that is is the Daryl Strawberry Recovery um, Center is getting ready to be turned into the Daryl Tracy Strawberry Christian Treatment Center. Okay. Wow. Congratulations, yes. man. Now, and you guys are doing something with with uh, with. Um, it's going to be in, just in the state of Florida, or are you going to? Just the state of Florida, the okay. treatment center, but we're doing, doing other things with um, uh, the state of Ohio and the Attorney okay. General. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the one I'm talking yeah. Uh, with the epidemic, okay. uh, with um, opiates, heroin addiction across America to help people. And if somebody wants to get treatment there, do you guys intake or are people brought to you? How can they, yeah, what, they is there intake. a website or something they can go to? Yeah, it's a website. You know, they can go to shedding, SheddingLightOnAddiction.com. Okay, shedding, shedding light on yeah, shedding light, yeah, shedding light on addiction. Yeah, SheddingLightOnAddiction.com. Okay. That has all the information on it uh, about the treatment centers mm -hmm. and about the, the book of, of recovery and everything that are uh, put out um, okay. this, this year. So. And you Just guys to got educate it? everybody about you know what's happening and how to help people. Okay, and I read you. You got a great book. You guys talk about your marriage. So yeah. if if you want to go to that, they can also get that on on shedding. Light. No, they can get that on uh, strawberryministry.org or, okay. or findingyourway.com. So Daryl, man, I I know we you talked about your dad wasn't there and, and just the awesome relationship with you had with your mom, and and then I know you're a great dad, man. You you and I talked. You were headed to see your son. You got uh, you got one at at uh, Mercy University. Uh, right, right. Uh, that's uh, what's his name? That's Jordan. That's Jordan. And then uh, DJ. Yeah. Uh, they told me now. I don't know, but they told me now. <laughs> DJ was the bomb. <laughs> the, DJ was pretty good. He was okay. pretty good in basketball. basketball. Okay. Yeah, he's a basketball now, player. Now, is it true that I heard that he he um, shut LeBron James down or he handled him? Uh, Tell me about that. Well, <laughs> I mean, they were in high school. I mean, they played. It don't matter. Yeah. Hey, you on the court? I tell him if you out here in the game, baby, I don't care if you're a kindergarten. Well, we, yeah, of course. You know, I mean, LeBron was. Uh, 
was a big time high school player. And, you okay. know, he was coming in, they played at um played at UCLA, I believe the game was. And, okay. And um LeBron was a high scoring player and DJ kinda of shut him down to twenty seven points instead of forty. Or yeah, he said it. But but um about 40, 40, 30. But I mean it was you know, it was part of his, his makeup of who he was. Yeah. You know, DJ turned out to be a, a pretty good base basketball player. You know, went to so the I University know he's got of Maryland. Some looks for that now. Yeah, he went to the University of Maryland. Then he got drafted by Phoenix and played in oh, wow. one year okay. with Phoenix. Yeah. And then then he went overseas to start playing basketball overseas. Okay. Um, now you know, as he as if he's like us, uh, as the older he gets, when he gets fifty five, and, yeah, and I'm yeah. fifty, I'll be fifty four in a minute, but uh, that story get better. He, he, LeBron James probably wouldn't get but four points. <laughs> So now you've got, you've got your, your boys uh, and they are athletes. Um, was, it, was it because of your involvement in their lives that you were able to, to, to push them and tell them, hey, because you, remember, you talked earlier about you coming into training camp in mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. Did you try to tell them those, uh, pass those same work ethics to them and say? Well, I put it like this. I didn't, I didn't try to push them, uh -huh. neither one of them to play uh, sports. Yeah. Um, I just wanted them to pick what they like doing and just encourage them. Okay. I didn't want to put the hype on them of how great I was mm -hmm. or anything. I mm -hmm. never talked about myself, but I talked about how hard it is, yeah. you know, to be an athlete and to be great. Mm -hmm. And I just always challenge my boys about if you, greatness comes when you put the work in. Oh. That, that's Ooh. when you become great. That's why LeBron is so good. Every time you see LeBron after the season's over, mm -hmm. what he's doing? He's working out, he's yep. training. Yeah, that's true. Is your relationship now with your kids uh, kind of better because it's incredible okay it's incredible because i'm a man i'm no yeah. longer i'm no longer a baseball player yeah I'm and is no that longer, intentional though you yeah yeah i'm not a celebrity mm -hmm. you know i'm their dad and i love them and and i correct them when they make bad decisions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what dad's supposed to do what dad's supposed to do yeah. he's supposed to be there to let them know that's that's not good yeah i always tell my kids and i tell people this too you can pick your sins, but you can't pick your consequences. Boy, we gonna have to, man. You, what you doing? Nick? We gotta. You, what you doing with your free time? I'm gonna have you <laughs> be the Daryl Fred. We can Stoke. pick them. Yeah, we, we, we can. We, Daryl Strawberry <laughs> Fred Stokes show. We yeah, can you, pick them all the time, Fred. Uh, can I, I may not be able to afford you though, man. No, you no. might be too expensive. <laughs> no, for I ain't expensive at all. <laughs> but I'm saying we can pick them. We could pick Daryl, man. You, you, I could pick my sins. But you can't pick the consequences that's coming behind them. So I tell my kids that so they can understand that there are consequences behind our actions, our wrong actions and our sinful ways. Yeah. And we, we need to get back to educating our kids on the principles, mm -hmm. not the, not being successful. Okay. But these real principles. Okay. You know, because I've been successful, you've been successful. Mm -hmm. And that day is gonna come and it's gonna be over. Yeah, yeah. But if you keep picking these sins in your life, you're going to keep getting these consequences mm -hmm. behind them. you won how many championships? Four. Four championships. Batting champion. Or what is no it? No batting champion. Uh, what is home it? Four run. world championships. Four world series. series home run series. champion. Home run. That's what I'm thinking about. Home run champion. Okay. Did it all. Okay. So me listening to Daryl Strawberry and I'm saying, well, I'm never going to be a batting champion. I'm never going to win a world series. So how can, how can I, and you and I have talked about this, the, even the playing field mm -hmm. where I can, I can have what Daryl have in a sense. You talked about well, the you can be, the, 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 to even that out, you could be great with the gift that's inside you because God gives everybody a gift and everybody's gift not to play sports, mm -hmm. but the gift is inside of you. And that's why you have to come to the place knowing your purpose yeah, and who you are with yeah. him, not with all this other stuff with people, okay. but with him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem with our society and most people, uh, they miss the creator. Mm -hmm. They want the creation <laughs> but they don't of want stuff, the, yeah. but they don't want to know the creator yeah. who created you. And when you think, when they start tapping into who created me and, and mm -hmm. they start laying with him, then he'll 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 speak to you, and he'll tell you why he created you. That's good, man. You know, because there's a gift inside. He doesn't. Everybody's got a gift inside from him. Mm -hmm. And so if I maximize that, then you've maximized yours. We on, that puts us on, yeah. on the same level. Yeah, hey, we all yeah. we all on the same level. And yeah. it, it, none of us are with God. None of us are, are better than the next. That's good. You know, from a man's standpoint, man makes people believe that they're better. Oh, we always than competing as me. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And, and you make yourself believe that you're better, but you're not when when you finally meet the creator. Yeah. He makes you understand that you guys are all you all start on on the same playing field. Yeah. You all a center. So, uh, man, this has been fun. But I, I do want to say this because you play with two different teams. Right. You play with the Mets and uh, you play with the uh, Stanky. I mean, not Stanky. Stanky. The Yankees. 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 Yank
I like the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does. Yeah, man. You know, the Yankees have developed. Sometimes people say they, they bought players and paid for championships and all this stuff. But hey, winning is winning. Ooh. Okay. With, with that being said, let's say Daryl Strawberry is Hall of Famer. And I believe you you are, man. I, I think they, they, they measure you by what you're doing on the field. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful to, to call you my friend. But let's say Daryl Strawberry is going into the Hall of Fame. And that they give you a choice. You're going in as a Met. Now, everybody's going to be watching this now, so so we get ready to put it out there. Daryl Strawberry, you're going to the Hall of Fame as a Met or Yankee. You know, they say choose right or wrong, so Met they or Yankee. S- they say choose right or wrong. Huh? You can't go, you can't do both. You can't go backwards and forwards well, at the same I, I time. Just, I just go in <laughs> as a New Yorker. Woo! <laughs> Boy, you off the top. <laughs> but you got to pick one, though. That's no, good, but you got to pick one. You, you can't got, pick you one. Look, You're just going as a New Yorker. A New I mean, Yorker. Just, yeah, just as a New Yorker. Just leave it at that. Say, well, he just decided he'll go in as a New Yorker. With, with Daryl Strawberry, my friend, the, the Hall of Fame <laughs> New Yorker. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you, bro. Yes, yeah, baby. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, baby. <laughs>